Hello everyone. In this video, I have one thirty ninety from iChill. Here, the customer wrote in the description that he installed the water cooler, and after that, the cart is no longer working. So, we have to find out where is the problem and try to repair it. For this video, I decided to go step by step how to diagnose, how to find the faults, and how to repair if possible. So. Let's first start with measuring the external powers, like at 12 volts, 3.3 volts from the PCI SWOT, the first pair of data lines, they have the same reading, the first 8 pin, the second 8 pin, no short circuits, turning the card, checking the PEX reset, and also the reference clock plus and the minus okay from here everything is looking good let's switch to resistance and starting measuring the the main power rails which are created from the board first we have five volts perfect after that comes 1.8 rail 300 ohms completely normal the pegs we have 4.5, which is also normal, and the memory. We have around 38 ohms, which is completely fine. So, next step is to make a visual inspection, because every time when installing the water cooler, when I see description like this, I'm always, almost always sure that something is ripped from the board. Almost always is around the screw holes, or on the um, corners, the outside of the board. So let's make a visual inspection under the, the microscope. Let me adjust the focus for you. So let's start from here. This is the five volt uh, inductor right here. We're in the corner and let's go around and see what is the condition? Is something missing or not? Here, right here on this bottom side is very typical area. Sometimes this capacitor is missing or these uh, two resistors are missing. But in this case, we have everything in place. Check the rest of the power stages. Here looks good. Continuing with the round chips from the one side. Here is the BIOS chip. And so far nothing unusual. Let's check also the GPU chip. I'm also checking always the corners. If they are still intact or damaged. Here looks like perfect. So, the other side, the power stages. And from the front side, everything looks good. Let's turn the board around and check the back side also. Adjust the focus again. Okay. So, again, the same. Looking for damages. Looking for something burnt or missing. Here is the... 1.8 volt. The RAM chips on the back side. Paying attention to the screw holes, as I said, very important. And here we have the PVM controllers. And so far, everything is looking good. So, what is the next step from here? Let's plug the card to the test machine as a secondary device. Uh, list the PCI devices in Linux. See if the card is recognized or not. If the card is recognized, we can run some tests. Let's continue from here and list the PCI devices. And the 3090 is recognized, which is very good. We can try to run some mods tests to see what, what we will get. And we have a fail. 
and this is a training error fail. Let's go up and we have the training status for the bank for partition C. We have error 2. Error 2 means the lower bits uh, from 0 to 31. Okay, let's do something different. Let's dump the data for the training status. After the dump file is ready, I will switch to Windows and we can take a look. Here on partition A, B, everything looks normal and we are on partition C0 and we have a lot of errors. We have some problems there in this partition for, for the 3090, there are two RAM chips for the, two, for the C0 in the front and, and also one on the back side. So this information here is completely enough to start the repair if this card was 3080 or 3080 Ti. But for 3090, I need more information. So let's check the second dump file. Here on the left side, the first number is, is representing the partition. In this case, we are starting with A. Uh, 1 means B and so on. The second number is the byte. We have 8 bytes for every partition. Here they are starting from 0 to 7. With all this clear, let's scroll down to partition C. I have already changed the cover here so we can see better. Let's mark the errors. So what we can see, we have errors, partition C, here is number 2 and the uh, the 40 bits the 40 bytes are from 0 to 3 so this means c0 for c0 we have two ram chips for 3090 and they are working in pairs this means from this dump file we cannot exactly tell which of those of those two chips is faulty but here on this side uh, on the right side we have something different this shows us we have errors uh, for bytes from 0 to 3, but here we don't have errors for the third and the fourth byte. This means we have errors only on the first and the second byte. So let's open the schematics and see the, uh, the mapping for these RAM chips. And here is the table with the mapping for this uh, 3090. We have errors on byte 0 and also byte 1. Here on the top, this is the mapping for the whole, whole partition. For one partition on 3090, we have four RAM chips. Here is 1, 2, 3 and 4. The first two are working in pair for the bytes, for the bits from 0 to 31, so the lower. And then the number 3 and number 4 are working for the higher from 32 to 63. With our errors on byte 0 and byte 1, we can notice that they have the same connection. So the pins are connected in pairs. Like here, CMD1 is connected to the next chip with CMD1 also. And um, as we saw, we have errors, complete errors here on byte 0 and complete errors on byte 1. From experience, I can tell you that we have missing power somewhere on the chip. Maybe something is, is ripped, maybe something is disconnected from the RAM chip or under the GPU chip. We have to take a closer look. So let's scroll down. Here we have the partition, the partitions. Let's find out where is the partition C, right here. And here, for, for example, the pin CMD1 is connected to the one of the RAM chips on the top side. Here is the RAM chip on the top side, is M8, and also connected to uh, right here, M505. This is the RAM chip for C0, but on the bottom side and also we have CMD1, so they have exactly the same connections. And we are missing whole this part here, so all this is missing. 
we have errors there and also all oh, this is missing we have also errors here so from here let's go under the microscope check these areas again and we're looking at m505 this is the c1 bank from the bottom side the ram chip and i want to take a closer look to the chip itself and also the surrounding components i want to check if the chip is cracked or damaged here everything looks fine let's check the front side also adjusting the microscope okay checking the ram chip also looking good and right here something is not something is unusual here and we have missing one component also with the pad from the board and this resistor is also kind of damaged let's open the schematics and see what these components are and we have it right here so this com this component is a resistor it's completely missing and this one is still on the board but damaged let's check what this resistor is on the data sheet and we have a pull up resistor 10 kilo ohms and check the next one okay the next one is also here so these are two pull up resistors from the uh, vddq and one of these is going to smd13 and the second one is going to smd18 let's see where these are so the missing one is going to smd13 this is most important uh, let's check the ram chips where we have smd13 so exactly what i said on this this whole part here is missing this whole part is with errors and the smd13 is going also to the other ram chip on the bottom side m5505 also right here this is also missing connection and we have errors here on the whole section the other one let's check it again this was uh, also 10 kilo ohms but this is still on the board and this is going to smd18 let's check the smd18 on the chips and it is right here so the next the next section but we don't have errors here because maybe maybe this component is still attached to the board to the pads and is still working that's why we don't have errors here and the same connection goes also right here to the bottom side so it's clear that's why we have missing sectors from these two ram chips Let's make the repair and check if everything works after that.
I dumped the training status again after the repair and let's check the results together. So it said partition C is right here up to here. So we no longer have errors. This means that our job is done and the repair is successful. So we diagnosed the cart, we found the problem, we repair it and now the cart is working again normally. This was a pretty simple repair, but very important part is the diagnostic. Because if you see a training error or, or on one RAM chip or a partition, in this example C0, the first thing in your mind is to go and change the RAM chips in the front and the back side. If this doesn't work, you think that the GPU is a problem. And after that, you want to rebuild the GPU chip also. But this, this will not solve your problem. Because here the problem was completely different. So always take your time. Work smart, not hard. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you need a repair, check the links in the video description and we will see us in the next one.